<laughs> yeah. is to look for every call that comes out until that one moment comes. Or find a way to make it happen on your own. Um, you know, that's a perfect example. If you can find a way to create said project on your own and use it to apply for public art contracts with, I mean, that's a way to expand the funding. Um, we had, I, I was giving a talk once at a clay conference for Nsika, and somebody asked about street art and graffiti art. Well, how do you, you know, how can I as a street artist get a project? And, you know, how do you feel about guerrilla art? And my response to that is, do it, document it, and then submit it to us, and show us what you do. So, um, you know, another example, Matt and Maria had done a project at their home that, um, is really phenomenal. They showed it actually, you guys always show it in the first slide. That was something they did in their personal space that they used as an example to show panels that yes, we can actually do this. So um, if you can find a way to do it. share your thoughts with it, but again, because we can't direct select an artist without having this public process, um, there's no guarantee that you would get the project. And the way, maybe, let me back up a little bit, the way our projects come together, um, we will meet with uh, different departments and go over their projects. So in other words, we just met with the water department, so okay, where are you guys working? We have a whole GIS mapping system. We look at where their capital projects are, and then we look at the possibilities of those sites. We try and spread <coughs> money out district-wide so that every council district is getting smart work, so that every resident in the city of Phoenix gets to benefit from our program. And then from there, we build what we think the project should be, unless in the case of Reach 11, we're approached by a different department that says, okay, look, we have this big soccer park and we need shade and this is what we want you guys to do. Um, that's where I as a project manager and the rest of the team of project managers and program director go out to the sites and figure out, you know, where the work should be. It might be another pass. It might not. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question. Right. <laughs> I think I am. But I've got some advice for you on that. But, um, one thing is that we found, because we, there have been some projects um, where, you know, I, well, all of that's something that I didn't do in my studio, but it's on my list of things I'd like to do. And then I'll see a call, and it might be, like there was one in LA that was almost exactly like a project I did, and Maria saw the sketch of what I was doing, and she said, and the ideas, and she said, oh my gosh, this call is perfect for it. And so, you know, we started to pursue it. Fortunately, we found out that the budget for the project in LA was $5,000, including travel, and <laughs> but, but you'd be surprised. I mean, there are things that come up that, it, that they say exactly what you want to do. So you may not get to do it in the exact location, but um, but there are there are tons of calls out there. So you might get lucky that, that something like that would come up. I would say too, you know, my advice would be to, to concentrate on the ideas of what you're trying to develop in the process and take that to another project because it is really difficult. If you have an idea, personally, what I would do if you're that much in love with that site and your idea, I would produce a presentation about it and sock it to them and just keep socking away at it until somebody buys into it, somebody else buys into it from some department who knows it might get funded and might not. Okay, I have one other question too. How important is it to, um, if you're not familiar with the pieces like that, like can you do like the drawings or sketches of your project that, that is acceptable? And present it to the, to the board or to, the, yeah. to these uh, panels? You can. Um, I, I think CAD and all that stuff is important. You know, the CAD drawings that you saw in this park were actually given to all of the finalists. So we didn't produce them. We just put Photoshop on top of them. Um, but CAD, you know, first of all, you know, for the presentation side of it, CAD's not important at all. All you want to do is present your ideas and however you do that, however the medium you work in to do that is, is 
uh, really up to you. The interesting thing is that once you get the projects off, and if they're dealing with engineers, the engineers want it and can. But even then, there, when artists in pre with previous projects, I know this from, from artists I've worked with, people that don't know CAD, they hire somebody that draws their CAD for them, and then they're just a, another consultant that they use. So it's not a problem if you don't have training in these areas. There's people that can help you with any of it. And in fact, um, there's an Al Price actually calls us sometimes and says, oh, I need a rendering for something. You know, do, do you want to do it for me? Um, and so we'll, we'll work on some agreement and we'll produce rendering. He's the only person I've, I've, I've done that for, and I don't think I want to do it anymore. Um, <laughs> particularly because Al is so precise about everything, and, and we've got other projects going on, and he keeps wanting me to do it, and it's like, oh. but, but there are plenty of people out there that aren't, you know, doing their own work, that that's what they want to do. And right now, there's tons of out work people that, tons of out work architecture students and stuff <laughs> that want to, to pick up work like that. Yeah. Wait, can I, I'm sorry, I just want to jump in and answer part of that. You brought up sketches. AutoCAD is not necessary, and nor is it necessary to bring in a PowerPoint. We don't distinguish how we expect the proposal or the form for it to be in. What we do expect is, or what we hope, is for a professional package and something to leave behind. This is huge. Um, after the panel sees your presentation, you walk out of the room and artist number two comes in. Then after everybody's given their presentations, we take a break, we bring everybody back, and discussion starts. We need something visual to remind them of what they saw. Um, so that's huge. Whether it's you know a folder with drawings in it, whether it's a PowerPoint, whether it's a board that you've created, it doesn't really matter. Model, perfect. I mean, Al Price rarely, he's just started doing the AutoCAD thing. I mean, the presentations I've seen of his are usually models. He's a welder. He creates small things. Um, Yes, and a lot about the language. She's a pretty animated kind of speaker. Um, but again, I think that goes back into Matt's point of show them who you are and don't worry about the technical abilities until after the fact. That's where I, as the project manager, comes in. If you're awarded the project, I'm going to sit down with you and say, okay, this is how I expect your drawings to be. If you can't provide this, here's a list of people you might want to think about hiring. Um, if they're going to do a drawing, and I will say this because I've seen it a bunch of times. If you are somebody who sits down with a pencil and paper, make sure that the drawing is finished, clean, and presentable. In other words, don't come in with something with fingerprints on it from your studio, coffee stains, tape from hanging it on the wall. And you know, I'm not trying to sound condescending. I've just seen it happen. And it, I've seen people come in with beautiful paintings. I mean, just breathtaking. But panels don't, they can't make that leap. They see a drawing, they see a painting, and then they're saying, well, this is a studio artist who has done X. This is a work of art, it's beautiful, I don't want to touch it, I don't want to mess with it. So find a way, whether it's you know, scanning it and going to keep it, to put it on a board, however it is. You don't want to leave original artwork with me either, and not because I don't <laughs> want it around or because you know I won't treat it with respect, but again, up in our office in a big pile with all the other proposals, and it won't maybe get back to you in the same way that you're in the same manner. It's all these small issues you're talking about. If you're basically hearing about these through the, uh, the public art network, is that basically is it your main source? Or? Yeah, going on to um, various different websites and looking at what opportunities are there. There's, um, it's weird because there are some, Phoenix is. is Thankfully, one of the most complete, but none of them are completely complete. I mean, you, you go on to Phoenix's and you get a list of 10, and then you go on to Los Angeles's and, and there might be eight there, and there are two that you didn't see on Phoenix's, and you go on to Baltimore's and you see other ones, and, and you know, Blundell has its own list, Scottsdale, Tempe. I mean, they all, everybody has their own list, and we just go through it periodically for a couple of weeks and just search through all of them and look for calls that we haven't seen and see which ones, you know, are good. I strongly suggest you know, a web list around what people have been around other ones. 
Because we it's weird how many there's so many and they all seem like they're the uh, the Las Vegas one is one of the best ones I've ever seen. And then you find those, you just Google it and for to found a bunch of lists, you know, search public art calls and you know most of them come up in municipalities. Phoenix one's great, Las Vegas one's great, Pittsburgh one's great. Las Vegas must have somebody just who does their community outreach because it is a fantastic And it's kind of recent, I mean, they've only come up in the 